Yo, what's up guys? In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to have more energy all the time, right? And I know you're watching this video and like, this motherfucker doesn't have any energy. Look how low energy he is. I'm actually, I'm just a chill person. So that's my excuse. Um, but the past couple of days, I've been getting up at 4.30 in the morning where I would normally work out for about 30 minutes. I've been and uh, like with weights for 30 minutes. Now I'm doing an hour of weights at like high intensity and an hour of cardio in the morning and then going to work and working with much more enthusiasm than I normally work with and then coming home at night and stretching for about 30 minutes. Trying to get that stretching time up to an hour. The, the issue is not that I don't have the energy to do it. It's just that it's kind of boring to me. So that's uh, gonna actually, interesting that I even hear myself say that because that's kind of gonna play a little bit of a part in um, the solution or how to actually have more energy. So it's really simple, right? Well, I guess I'll tell you how I, how I discovered this hack. And it's, it's not even really that revolutionary, but I was, at, um, I was at work the other day, or it was actually before going to work. And somehow I decided to watch a video with David Goggins. And for those of you who don't know who David Goggins is, you, you definitely, I'll, I'll leave a link. I, I watched um, both of his interviews by Joe Rogan. And the guy is, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a self-improvement addict, right? I love all these guys, you know, Grant Cardone, Tony Robbins, fucking whatever, Jocko, like all these people. David Goggins is the king. Jordan Peterson, you know, forget about all those guys. The only guy that you ever need to listen to is David Goggins. He is the number one, the king, the emperor, the fucking ruler of them all, the number one self-help guru that you ever need to listen to. You don't need to listen to anybody else. Nobody, not me, not fucking Tony Robbins, nobody. David Goggins is the guy. Okay, now what is what is his whole thing? I'll summarize it for you briefly. He grew up in the ghetto. He's like, came from a shit family. His dad beat him, his dad beat his mom. He had no money, couldn't read, was 300 pounds. He was like the loser of losers, you know? And he says this himself. These are his words, not mine. Well, maybe I said, you know, paraphrase for him, but that's essentially what it is. Um, and he ended up um, joining the Navy SEALs. Shit. He ended up joining the Navy SEALs. He did three hell weeks. He did army ranger training, finished it, did two Delta Force selections. He broke the pull-up record. He runs ultra marathons, which are races that are 100 miles. He's run a 200 mile race. The dude just does all kinds of crazy shit. And now he's, you know, he's public speaker, motivational speaker. He does, um, he does like, wild, like woodland forest fighting <laughs> just because he wants another challenge. The dude is like completely mental. And if you listen to him talk, his whole thing is that you need to conquer your mind. You, you can't let your mind conquer you. And when I was, when I was watching this, like when I, you know, I'd, I'd seen clips of him before here and there, I'm like, oh, this guy's pretty cool. I had never actually seen the entire interview and heard his whole story. When I heard his whole story, something just clicked in my mind. I was like, wow, this guy, he's absolutely 100% right. And, and really, if we want to distill his message down to a single sentence, it's that you can push yourself indefinitely if you want to, really. And that's something that, that, you know, I guess I think is best illustrated when he talks about how he, when he ran his first 100 mile race, he showed up at 230 pounds, right? With no training at all. He just, he didn't like, he didn't prepare for it. He didn't like, you know, go running all the time. He'll say his cardio was 20 minutes on the elliptical once a week. That was, that was the cardio that he did. And he shows up to this 100 mile race and he ran 101 miles in 19 hours. So, you know, and, and the way that he did that, according to him, is just by mentally pushing himself through it, even though his body was broken, even though he couldn't do it. So when I'm when I'm watching this, right, I started watching the interview in the morning um, when I when I woke up, because I'll, I'll listen to like motivating stuff in the morning. You guys have heard me probably talk recently about how I listen to Jordan Peterson and I clean my room, I like whatever, do all this stuff. So. I wanted a little break from the professor and I was like, I need to, I need to hear something else. You know what I mean? Like Jordan Peterson is great, but it's kind of depressing, you know, cause he talks about a lot of depressing shit. He's not wrong, but it, it's a little bit of a bring down. You know what I mean? I, I, 
he's he's a genius he's brilliant he's amazing but like you listen to him and it's like yeah you're right fucking life does kind of suck <laughs> it is miserable um so anyway I, I was listening to david goggins and his whole thing was like you got to do shit that sucks really like if it sucks you got to do it if it sucks you, that's even more reason to do it because the more you do things that suck the more you'll find yourself and you'll get all these amazing benefits from it so i was like and this is exactly at a time where I'm going to work every day. And I'm thinking, man, this fucking sucks. Like the past couple of weeks at my job, I've been thinking to myself, you know, I've been waking up and I'm like, thank God I only have two days of this. And then I have a day off because that's my schedule right now is two days on one day off just because of how many people we have working here at the moment. So that was like that. That was the one reason why I hadn't quit is basically because I only had to work two days in a row and then I would have a day off to you know, do whatever I wanted to do. And that's not, that's not a good place to be. That's not, you know, you're not, you're not living your best life when you're doing that. So I was, I was watching this interview and I was listening and I was like, man, this motherfucker ran a hundred miles. If he can run a hundred miles, if he can do something like that, I can go to work and I can try hard and I can be in a good mood and I can make the most of it. And I kind of like put this to the test on that same day. Normally what I'll do when I go to work is I'll listen to music and I'll use it to kind of pump me up and I'll, you know, I've got my routine where I drink my coffee and I try to eat the right foods and I work out in the morning and I try to do all of these things that will help kind of prop me up when my, when my mental state is, is not at a hundred percent, right? Like when I'm bummed out, for example, about how the mall sucks or how my job sucks or how this other thing in my life sucks. Um, but those are, those are surface fixes, right? That's not, that's not a, that's not a deep, um, that's not a, that's not a deep solution to what the actual problem is, which is, which is my attitude, which is my desire to actually get the most out of my time there and push myself. Really, that's what it comes down to is, is pushing yourself as hard as you can in situations that are shit and not just like dragging yourself through them with as little effort as possible just to get by because that that's that's the worst way to do anything and i think this is something that we all know but easier said than done right it's it's much easier to, for me to go to work and like drag myself through it and like kind of try here kind of try there and just write it off as like oh it sucks here look at all these other people they also hate it like it's obviously bad for everyone it's not my fault it's everything else's fault it's the external environment's fault when in reality, if, you know, regardless of whether or not that's true, you, you still have, there's um, the benefit that you get from pushing yourself harder than you want to be pushed in difficult times is that's, that's like the secret sauce, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That's what's going to allow you to do crazy shit, like break the pull-up record and run a hundred miles without training for it, you know? Um, so anyway, I put this to the test. I was pumped, man. I was super pumped. And I'm standing there at work and I'm, I'm literally watching the interviews. I watch the interviews all day. <laughs> I've watched so many interviews of David Goggins in the past couple of days. And he says the same shit over and over, but it's, it's still, it's a message that is worth hearing over and over. Because it's not like you just hear something one time and you're like, oh yeah, okay, I'll remember that forever and apply it in every single situation in life where I need to. No, of course not. So anyway, I went to work <clears throat> the past couple days and I sold way more, way more than I've, than I've been selling in the past couple weeks, right? I've like crushed my numbers for this current period where it's really, really bad there now. And yesterday, I didn't bring home my piece of paper, but if you guys saw my vlog, you'll know that I, I'll, I'll make a little tally mark every time I do a demo, right? And if I, if I do a demo and I make a sale, I'll circle the tally mark. So yesterday I did, I think 10, 11 demos. And it was like, you know, tally with a circle, tally with a circle, one after another. I think I sold all but two demos yesterday, which I, I that's insane for me, really. And the, the reason that I did that is because from, from the beginning to the end, I pushed myself. I was like, I'm going to fucking push myself at every single part of this interaction right? Every single part from the minute that I say hello to me trying to get them to sit in the chair, to me doing the actual demonstration, to me closing the sale, to me upselling them, I'm going to like 
relentlessly grab them by the throat and not let them go till either they say, no, no, I don't want anything, like leave me alone and they walk away, or until they actually decide to give me their money. So again, that sounds like kind of predatory, but I obviously do it in a very tactful, nice way with a big smile on my face. But you get the idea, right? That That is the, and anyway, the point is that I tried this and I had insane amounts of energy. And to be fair, this is after waking up at 4.30 in the morning, which I've been doing for the past couple of days, waking up at 4.30 in the morning, working on my computer until eight, you know, whatever, have my morning routine, eat food, coffee, whatever, all that other stuff you do in the morning. That's after that, working out for two hours, and then I go to work, just push myself to the max. And the whole time I'm listening to his interviews and I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy ran a hundred miles, no preparation whatsoever. He did SEAL training three times. He did, what was it, three hell weeks? Like, I know the dude's whole story. Um, and uh, if he can do all that, I can fucking stand here and talk to girls and, you know, sell them a fucking straightener. It's not, it's not that hard comparatively. And it makes you kind of, um, it shows you kind of what's possible. And it shows you that if you commit to pushing yourself mentally, because we all think it's physical, and this is something that I've been guilty of in the past as well, which is one of the reasons why I'm so into health and fitness, because I'm always looking for that little hack, that little tweak, that extra supplement, the right food combination that will make it easier for me, right? And we all do this. This is just what we naturally think to be the case. But in reality, the, the real limitation is not necessarily the food that you eat, although that, you know, different foods will affect you differently, of course. But what I'm really starting to believe now is that it's a drop in the bucket compared to the, um, the control you have over your uh, ability to push yourself mentally, right? If you, can, if you can master your mind, if you can commit to pushing yourself mentally, and when I say mentally, I mean um, to not quitting or not letting up when you when things are getting difficult, right? Because it happens with everything, right? You're working out, you're like you're running for thirty minutes, and you're like, "Fuck!" I know I said I was going to run for an hour, but I've already run for thirty minutes, and you start rationalizing in your head, and you're like, "Well, I've already done thirty minutes. I got to do this later. I don't want to be tired. You know, uh, my feet are kind of starting to hurt." I don't want to have, I don't want to be low energy later. I don't want to get this injury because I don't want to be able to train. It's like you start coming up with all these bullshit excuses where if you say, no, I committed to doing this time and you push yourself, like Greg Doucette says, how hard should you train? Harder than last time. And that's, that's like common sense in the fitness world, but like you have to also apply that to the way you think about attacking your problems. Um, or the way you think about doing the things, not necessarily your problems, but doing the things in your life that you need to do that may present some sort of challenge to you. So that's the secret to having more energy. I know you don't want to hear it. I know, I know you want to hear me say like drink apple cider vinegar in the morning and you know cut out trans fats and like don't eat sugar and those things are fine, but you know, and you do need to do those things. You obviously should commit to like being healthy. But I think instead of seeing, um, instead of having the opinion that those things make up 90% and, and your mental state is 10%, or that those things will somehow lead to a magical mental state that will make everything easier, I think that's a mistake and I think it needs to be completely turned around. And this is something that I, as far as I know, I, I don't think I've ever really thought this way in the past, but this is a real game changer for me at least where if you if you commit mentally to pushing yourself harder and not just like a little bit harder right you're, you're in competition with yourself but pushing your, like understanding that you can push yourself way harder than you think you're capable of I, I would never think that i can go and work out for an hour and wake up at 4 30 in the morning and then go run for an hour and then go do this job and do really well at the job and then come home and stretch and like do all of this stuff. I would never have thought that I could do that at this time. I just never would have thought that it's even possible. But if you if you just commit to doing it and you push yourself when, when times are difficult, then it's actually possible. And it kind of makes me wonder what else I'm capable of. And really what it makes me think is that I feel kind of like I wasted a lot of time. I'm like, shit, why didn't I just realize this sooner? 
you know, I, I could have spent so many more years, like the prime time years, um, just pushing myself and I would be in a much different place right now. Anyway, that is my video about that. Let me know what you guys think about my little tip. Do you guys watch David Goggins? If you don't watch David Goggins, who do you like in the self-improvement world? Let me know, leave me a comment. Also I have a new fitness course coming out, The Minimalist Guide to Fitness. Check it out, link in the description, theminfit.com will be sections on fasting, nutrition, exercise, like principles, exercise demonstrations, sample workouts, cookbook, all that good stuff. Sign up for the free webinar and to get updated about, you know, when the course is coming out, link in the description. Peace.